are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Have you ever seen the movie Office Space, Steve? I have seen the movie Office Space many times. That space behind you looks like when he gets gets told he has to go downstairs in like the little tiny cubicle. Right. <laughs> yeah, no space. There. I don't. I don't have a red stapler, but if I did, it would be perfect. <laughs> there you go. You know, just you know, but but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, not the way I expected this to start. I'm gonna uh, let me first say that I loved this movie and your performance in it. Um, it's it was so great. And uh, that's really all I have. So I'm going to leave now. And uh, <laughs> no, but but being being serious, um, this a, a script like this and a, and a role like this only comes along once in a while. Yeah. Um, so what actually did you pay to be in the movie? Um, well, I told them that uh, they would never have to pay me for any future roles that I played and that I would just do. Uh, no, I don't know, man. I, I was just so blessed. And, and it was a it was a. The dream role, you know, it's like, what do you what do you say? You know, you get to play Cassius play, Regina King's directing, Leslie Odom Jr.'s playing Sam Cook. I mean, it's just like, you know, what can you say? It was a blessing. Completely. Um, do you what's what's crazy about this movie is even though it's taking place in 1964, it's as relevant today and what's going on today as it was in that hotel room back in 64. Yeah. Um, do you think, and this is kind of like a serious question, but do you think that the past year with what's been going on in society with Black Lives Matter and with, with everything that feels like it's going on, do you feel like we're at a, a transition period? Do you feel like something's actually happening or do you think it's gonna be still decades to come? I mean, for me as a black man, I feel like it's always at the highest stakes, you know, in terms of my interactions with police, my interactions with society, what I am able to say and not say authentically um, in, in, in terms of even my career, you know? So um, do I think we're at a watershed moment? I think a lot has been brought to the, to the forbearance, but I mean, they thought that back in the sixties, you know? And I remember when Obama got elected, people thought that was the end of racism, you know? So um, I just think that this is a, something that's gonna be continually something that we have to stay on top of and continue to work, uh, work for and work toward. I understand. Um, I, jumping into talk, to, to filming the stuff in the hotel room. I'm curious, how do you as an actor get ready when everyone, you can feel like everyone's bringing their A game. And I'm mm -hmm. curious, like, what was it like for you getting ready to film these scenes and working out the staging and everything that went into it? It was, uh, it was, it was <laughs> a little bit of, um, I don't wanna say overwhelming, but I was definitely the least uh, experienced in that aspect. You know, you're talking about Leslie who had already done Hamilton, um, Aldis who had already been in, you know, um, uh, straight out of Compton. So these guys have been a part of big ensembles in the past. And uh, I was I was a hair behind in terms of the blocking and, and, and in terms of like those types of aspects. And sometimes I would have ideas and we'd already have blocking locked in and they'd be like, you gotta, you gotta have it already. So it was like high speed chess almost, you know, where you're strategizing and you're paying attention and you have to be ready for whatever you're getting to respond instantly. Um, and so the great, the benefit that I had was I was so prepared in my character that I never had to wonder how Cassius would respond or how would Cassius move. I already knew because I was just, it was already instinctual for me to respond with his responses. Um, and that was, that was essential when you're, when you're, you know, the one kind of feeling the, when you're the youngest of the group. A lot of actors I've spoken to will uh, try and stay in character in between takes and while they're on set to keep that mindset going. For you, were you always staying in, always. in his? Always, the whole time, from the time I landed in New Orleans till, till we got back. Um, and then I, you know, once COVID hit and all that stuff, then I kind of dropped it and picked it back up in, in the last scenes that we shot, um, that we picked up in LA. But, you know, the entire time in New Orleans, I was in cash. Um, you know, and it was funny because the way people would react to you when you're when you're portraying Cassius Clay, it, it shows you how much they love him because they'll treat you like him. They'll say, oh, champ, you don't got to pay for that champ. Don't worry about it. I say, all right, man. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and, uh, you know, people would give me gifts on set, you know, workout equipment, gloves. They want me to sign things, not as Eli, as Cassius, you know, like it was just amazing. The, the amount of love and, and um, connection that he still has, you know, it just showed how amazing he was. Do you feel like your cast has really only met you recently? 
because you stayed in character for so long? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We we met, you know, before we started shooting for a brief period in L.A. And then in this whole promotional process, since the film is like really caught uh, a lot of attention at, at film festivals and, in, and then the press, um, we spent a lot of time with each other on Zooms and stuff like that. So I feel like they know me, but, um, but it definitely, you know, during that period of time, I think we all were locked in and it was it was a very focused period of time when we were shooting. It, it really shows in the movie. Again, I, I loved it and I loved your performance. Um, thank you so much for your time. I wish you nothing but the best. I appreciate it. God bless and thanks. Thank you.